Originally a harness maker, Emil Pops Kineski owned a bicycle shop at Wellington and Barton. In 1923, a request from a local goalie would prove instrumental in shaping Pops' life and the game of hockey. Jakey Forbes came in the store from the Hamilton Tigers. He was on a losing streak and he asked Pop if he could help him out with his pads. And Pop said, well, look it. There's no rules that says you can't make them wider or puff them up. So he did. It was designed off a cricket pad. He added about two outside rolls to each pad and uh, they started to win, win uh, the games. He was on a winning streak and they called him Jumpin' Jakey Forbes. A salary dispute would end NHL hockey in Hamilton. The Tigers were sold and became the New York Americans. Hamilton's loss was Pop's gain. Word got around about Jakey Forbes' puffed up pads and the orders started rolling in. But Pops didn't stop with just making goalie pads. Pop made a lot of other uh, um, innovations. He made the first cork-centered softball. He made hundreds of those. He made tendon guards for the back of skates. The guys were getting cut. And then be besides the goalie pads, he made the catching mitt for goaltenders. He made upper body protection. He made uh, shoulder and arm pads. He made the belly pads. But it was the goalie pad that would remain the focus. Only pro and top level goalies had a chance of getting their hands on the 300 pairs of pads the store turned out each year. They were built to each individual netminder, which meant a custom fitting and for Johnny Bauer, an opportunity to get an added advantage. He says, you're a little bow-legged. I said, I am. I said, that's what I was going to ask you. I said, you think you can make these a little wider? He said, no, no, you can't. I said, I got trouble in the five hole. He said, no, no, I can't make those pads any wider than that because he said, they have to be legit. So I said, oh, okay, fine. But uh, anyway, he did make them a little bit wider. So he said, make sure you pull the straps tight then, okay? And uh, it helped a great deal. From 1969 to 1971, every goalie in the NHL was wearing Kineski pads. A black book with each goaltender's pad dimensions and measurements was kept, but Pops never gave away any secrets, even to some of his closest clients. I still wanted to go and see how he made these pads, you know, because they're all handmade, hand-stitched and everything else, and horse hair inside of them, I think they were, and, and that, and that. But he wouldn't let, John, nobody goes upstairs there, he said. I said, no, how, Mr. we're good friends, it doesn't matter how good we are, it's my life and my living, and he says, nobody goes upstairs. My sons know how to do this. Anything ever happens, then my sons are going to take over. Yeah, but I, I wanted to just, he still said, you might as well change your subject because you're not going upstairs. He wouldn't let me go upstairs at all. <laughs> Pops would work upstairs at the store until he was 94. In 1977, he passed away at the age of 96. Pops spent 50 years making goaltending equipment and he truly was the goaltender's best friend, and he was the patriarch of the pad. Uh, he's done so much for the hockey players, so much for hockey, that fella. And uh, I know I wouldn't be here if we didn't have the equipment that he had right now to save my body, more or less, because the equipment was really good. The Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame welcomes Emil Pops Kineski.